last time on Nostalgia Crank, Randy Savage, Sega Tom, and Don Bluth. You can figure out the rest from there. the nostalgia critic I remember it so you don't have to this is my punishment for making fun of Don Bluth I have to play Dragon's Lake it doesn't sound that bad but have you ever actually played Dragon's Lair of course not nobody has you just watched it like everyone else did and wait for that eccentric millionaire to come in blow all his money and figure out what moves you're supposed to do Okay, here's the thing. The game really is innovative and beautiful. Nothing had ever been done like it before. But it's friggin' hard! Imagine Legend of Zelda 2, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, and Silver Surfer blindfolded. That is only the training to how hard this game is. Is someone regretting not talking about how awesome I am? You do know the last time I did anything game related, it totally blew up in my face, right? Yep. I really hate you right now. Hey, do I need to do a death glare again? You know what, try me. I bet I've gotten used to it by now. Oh, you're like that shaming disapproval of every morbid grandparent. Less talking, more reviewing. <sighs> so if you don't know, Dragon's Lair came out as an arcade game in the 1980s. The story was what every story was for a game in the 80s. Guy saves chick. But to be fair, this one did have a good sense of humor as both the hero and the damsel seem playfully airheadish. <laughs> it was the first cinematically animated adventure quest with Bluth as the director of animation. Back then, it was practically impossible to replicate it on other platforms, but today, it's been adapted to several consoles and has been beautifully updated. But with that said, it's still friggin' impossible. Now granted, you can set it to easy where the arrows always tell you where to go, but there's a name for that, I believe. It's called, um, cheating. Yeah, the arcade game didn't work that way, so that's not what I'm doing either. I'm gonna play it as the game intended, the way that made it popular when it first came out. With that in mind, the controls are seemingly simple. Up, down, left, right, and push one button to use the sword. Easy enough, right? Well, here's the problem. It's not always clear what you're supposed to do. Sometimes it's a no-brainer. You see a monster, you use the sword. But other times you're supposed to move out of the way. <laughs> How am I supposed to know to use the sword on this monster, but run away from that one? But so what? I can just learn from my mistake on the next turn, right? Eleven herbs and spices of wrong! You see, because this was a new kind of gameplay, the developers thought it might be too easy. So they change up the level so you wouldn't figure it out too quickly. Because of this, you have to remember what the right choice was ten stages ago when it randomly pops up again. Because every single stage needs to be defeated, sometimes twice, in order to get to the final level. Ugh, okay, in that one I use the sword only once, very important. Okay, in that one I don't use the sword at all, I jump back, putting it in the vault. What? Wait a minute, it was a glowy thing! How am I supposed to not go after a glowy thing in a game? It's a glowy thing! It's like telling a dog not to go after a bone! It's friggin' nature! Oh, we're back here again. Okay, use the sword only once. Ha! You're my bitch, purple peni! Huh? <laughs> that was two glowy things! You, you just got in my head not to even go into one glowy thing and then you give me fucking two?! That's like telling me not to go after a cupcake and then you give me two cupcakes and then you smack me in the face for not going after the two cupcakes! What do you want?! In the depths of your ignorance, what do you want?! Mm -hmm. <laughs> glowy thing! To me. I wasn't supposed to drink it even though it said drink it! Who's running this goddamn place, GLaDOS?! Sometimes they're kind and cleverly lay out clues for you. Like whatever space is available, that's probably where you're supposed to go. 
Once in a while, even a door will open and close to indicate that's where you're supposed to head towards. Logical deduction can be the obvious route. But even the directions can be a little confusing. Like, look at here! Does this count as down or left? In the one fraction of a second, you have to, you have to make a decision. Down? <laughs> Now this one seems pretty easy, giving you plenty of time to figure out which way to go. <laughs> Child's play. Oh god! Oh shit! Oh man! Oh Christ! Oh god! Oh god! Oh, I swear I let go! Oh, oh fudge! Whoa, you're really bad at this. You think? I can usually win this in 10 minutes. That's because you made it! Schmuck. Actually, there was more effort in this layout than you may think. I'm not a gamer. And so when it came time to doing the game, a, a young man named Rick Dyer brought it to us and said, I want you to do a game about a little knight that goes into a castle and saves a princess. Well, the, the whole idea, the concept sounded good, but I didn't know how to do a game. So the entire game, which is about 20 minutes worth of animation, is a threat, a resolve, a threat, a resolve. The fun of the game was showing how many funny ways a person can die and still resurrect. I do have to say, one of my favorite things is hearing Dirk's wide variety of cowardly screams. <laughs> They're heard more often when you play. Shut up! Actually, I wouldn't be shocked if Bruce Campbell was inspired by some of Dirk's cries. <laughs> God, this game is so hard. <laughs> Damn it. Damn it. Damn it! And now, the Nostalgic Critic's Top 11 Death Scene. I'm not giving you the pleasure! Number 11. <laughs> Number 10. Christ! Number 9. Gonna make it this time! Number 8. I almost had that! Number 7. <laughs> Dirty little- Number 6. You're not funny, you know! Number 5. I don't even- Hey! Number 4. <laughs> My pain will not sustain you! Number 3. <laughs> what even happened? Number 2. And the number one nostalgic critic death will not be taking place because I just got to the final level! Ah, uh, don't worry. I'll save it for a special moment. Yeah, well, I'm about to win this sucker. After Daphne talks to me. Please save me! The cage is locked with a key. The dragon keeps it around his neck. To slay the dragon, use the magic sword. Oh, eyes on the prize! Eyes on the prize! <laughs> Wow. Eyes off the prize! Eyes off the prize! Strangely enough, the final level is surprisingly not that difficult. Maybe they finally want to show some friggin' mercy. Though to be fair, that's more what Dragon's Lair 2 is. Dragon's Lair. Time Warp. This was a much better put together gameplay. That flashing light that only gave direction once in a while is now throughout the entire game. The story is still the same, with Dirk saving Daphne from an evil villain, but luckily the villain has a brother who happens to be a time machine! Well, obviously. Trust me when I say that's the least of this game's weirdness. It starts off when you see Dirk telling his incredibly fruitful seed that their mother's been kidnapped again. My definitely kidnapped again, idiot! And the first level is literally escaping your mother in law you better mm -hmm. fight three miles, two miles, It's pretty hilarious. At first it looks like you're just following them through time as you drop by the prehistoric age, ancient Egypt, and even the Garden of Eden. But then it gets really weird by traveling to a giant Beethoven in a flying piano, and even Wonderland. Yeah, like Alice in Wonderland. It makes no friggin' sense, but it looks amazing. Was brilliant and the slighty toes to Kyra Gimble in the way for Mimsy were the Borogos and the Mograss outrage. This is some of the most imaginative imagery you will ever see in a game. Don, what the hell were you smoking to even come up with these weird ass ideas? You know, Dragon's Lair 2 was really fun for me because we didn't have to stay in the same time zone and we didn't have to stay in the same location. So, I, it, you know, it just triggers the imagination. You can go into any place that you can imagine. And with animation, anything is possible. The only downside is, once again, the game developers were afraid this would be too easy. So they added little trinkets and treasures you're supposed to pick up throughout the gameplay. Not a bad idea, until you get to the second to last level and realize that if you missed even one of those trinkets, you have to play the entire game again all over, collecting every single last one. Sort of, okay, I played through it once, I can play through it again! Let's get all those items. Here we go. Ah! What the hell am I missing? 
That's gotta be a damn it! What else is there? No. No. No! Wait, what did I just do? Hold on. Are you telling me that the butterfly is glowing, signaling me to grab it, the exact same time the fire is glowing, the exact same color? Wow. It's like... The extended cruelty of the first game is condensed down into one single solitary fuck you moment. Well, guess what fuck you moment? <gasps> FUCK YOU! Goddamn magic eyes are easier to see than that! <sighs> but whatever, I'm down to the final level. I have to get the evil ring off Daphne and kill the wizard before she eats me. And I only got one life left to do it with. Come on. Run! Baby, there it is! Well, it only took me eight playthroughs of the entire game, but I finally won the damn thing. Oh shit, we're still going? Oh my god, you're making me play through my happy ending! I don't know if that's awesome or awful. It's awful. Okay, almost there. Almost there. No, wrong turn! <laughs> And that is the number one nostalgic critic death scene. <laughs> These games are a pain! They're beautiful and amazing to look at, but they're a goddamn pain! I'm glad they're so groundbreaking and innovative, but they are impossible! They are so freaking frustrating and so incredibly hard! I want to support Dragon's Lair, but only to watch it, not to actually play it! Isn't there any way to do that without going through all this torture? Well, you could promote Dragon's Lair by supporting our crowdfunding campaign. Wait, you mean you are making a Dragon's Lair movie? Yeah. So, let me get this straight. If we get this funded, we would have gotten Don Bluth, THE Don Bluth, one of the animation gods, to return to animation? Pretty much. I literally just orgasmed a sperm that looks like Littlefoot. <laughs> See, there he goes. Well, if you're gonna do it, you have to do it the right way. Right way? What? What's the right way? The most advanced video game you can play is awaiting your discovery. Hey! Wanna see this on the big screen? Uh huh. Will they make Dragon Slayer a movie? Dragon Slayer? You mean that awesome arcade game we were just playing? No, I'm talking while I'm talking. Yeah! Ready for some excitement? Then make Dragon Slayer a movie! Here go, oh, Dragon Slayer, take a shit off! Wait! There's only room for one screaming psychopath around here! Uh, uh, We just blew up Africa! So go! Let me Dragon's Lair a movie! Or Don Bluth will give you the death steer! Ah! Huh? Everybody, Doug Walker here doing the charity shout out. As you know, next week we're gonna have a link for Indiegogo, the Dragon's Lair movie. Uh, but until then, as always, I'm gonna do a charity shout out here. And uh, this is one that you see all over the place. 
usually outside ringing a bell, and by God, they try their hardest to do the best, and that is, of course, the Salvation Army. The Salvation Army isn't just one cause, it's several causes. It wants to help families, it wants to help adults, it wants to help children, it wants to keep them fed, it wants to keep them in houses, it wants to keep them warm and safe, it wants to help people on Christmas, it wants to get them food, it wants to do everything that has to do with helping people. Every year around this time, you see them outside the grocery stores, the malls, and the city everywhere, ringing that bell in the freezing, freezing cold. There has never been a year you have not seen those people. They are always out there trying their best, reminding you of those who do not have a place to go or do not have much food to eat. They do this because they believe in helping people. They believe in making the world a better place. And they have done exactly that time after time. You can look at their YouTube channel, you can see so many of the various things they do, and of course, you can just go to their website. But even outside of that, just donating the tiniest bit outside the grocery store, or the mall, or wherever they are. This is the time of year when they need the most donations, so please definitely be generous and make all those times that they're waiting in the cold worth it.